In this video, you're going to learn how to track your website conversions using goals inside Google Analytics. We'll walk through how to identify goals and how to classify them into macro and micro conversions. We'll also cover how to assign goal value and how to configure them inside Google Analytics. When it comes to Google Analytics, there are different types of conversions we can configure. The variety of conversion types really reflect that there are so many different types and styles of websites. So you can configure the conversions that are suited to your site. It's important to start with the basics. So let's look at the four most common types of websites and the objectives that go along with these. Understanding the primary objective will help direct the way you configure Google Analytics to track conversions. If you have an e-commerce website, then the objective is to drive purchases online. For a lead site, we're trying to capture people's contact details so we can connect with them and convert that lead. We might have a content site where we're trying to get people to engage with our content. And probably less common is a support site where we're trying to get people to help themselves. I also want to highlight that you may have a hybrid of these. For example, you might be trying to generate leads, but also maintain a blog to engage with your audience and your prospects. As you start out, it's important to think about all the different actions you want people to perform on your website. These actions can be classified as macro or micro conversions. As you begin planning out what you're going to measure into Google Analytics, classifying your goals can help prioritize the different conversion actions. So it's really about deciding what's important and less important when it comes to your conversions. The best way to think about macro conversions is that they're the primary objectives for our site. So it's really about asking what's going to drive the most value for you and your organization. I've included some examples here of macro conversions to get you thinking. So for example, generating leads, making a purchase, becoming a member or booking would all be great examples of macro or primary objectives. You absolutely need to ensure you're using Google Analytics to measure these top level objectives. Macro conversions should really be your first priority when it comes to configuring Google Analytics. The next step after we have these macro actions actually reported into Google Analytics is to supplement them with micro conversions. So what are micro conversions? Well, micro conversions are really your secondary objectives, the actions that show a deeper level of engagement with your audience, but don't necessarily provide the same value as your macro conversion actions. This means that people have gone beyond just viewing content on your website, for example, pages, and that you actually have a deeper connection with that particular audience member. Some good examples of micro conversions include somebody downloading a PDF of our website. This could be a product brochure or maybe even a white paper. Another example is people watching video content that we've embedded in our website, commenting on our blog, or maybe logging into our members area. These could all be micro conversions that we track into Google Analytics. The reason why we want to configure micro conversions is that they can give us a more complete understanding and picture of the performance of our website and our marketing campaigns. One example is that you might find particular marketing campaigns are better at driving macro conversions, while others are better at driving micro conversions. Those insights can then allow you to really tweak your campaigns moving forward. So what are conversions and why are they important? The simplest way I found to explain conversions is that a conversion is any action that drives value for you and your organization. So actions that are valuable, and this value can mean a number of different things. It can be a real value, a calculated value, or even a symbolic value. So what does that mean? Here are some examples of what value can mean when it comes to conversions. I just want to highlight there's no one size fits all, so you might find one of these really speaks to you more than the others. An example of real value would be driving transactions on your website. So in this particular example, the real value would be from the credit card payment, the actual amount authorized on the credit card when someone makes a purchase. Calculated value, on the other hand, is commonly used for websites generating leads. For example, let's say you have a consulting business and you had a contact form where you're trying to get people to connect with you for consulting projects. 
Now, not every single one of those people completing the form is going to end up being a client or a customer. But we can actually do a rough calculation to understand what the average value of each of these leads is worth. And we also have the option of using a symbolic value. This is useful if you're not trying to generate actual revenue or it's difficult to calculate the value. So we can use a guesstimate to rank the importance of our different conversion actions inside Google Analytics. So there are some ideas to get you started. Today I'm going to focus on goals within Google Analytics. There are three different types of goals you can configure. Let's take a look. First we have our page based or destination goals which allow us to measure people reaching a particular key page within our website. This is by far the most common type of goal configured inside Google Analytics and is typically for someone viewing a thank you page on our site. For example, you might have an email newsletter sign up form at the bottom of your pages and when people fill out the form they get taken to a confirmation page. From there we can define the confirmation page as our goal conversion and then we can see how many people are completing that particular action on our website. The next option is an event based goal that uses Google Analytics event tracking to measure interactions occurring on your website. This could be for example downloading a PDF, watching a video or any other interaction on your site. You'll need to set up event tracking first so that events are included in your reports and then you can configure these as a goal. Finally there are engagement based goals and this is based on people spending a certain amount of time on your website or viewing a certain number of pages. I really encourage you to start from the left in terms of prioritizing which goals to configure. So definitely start with pages and then you can supplement it with events before looking at engagement based goals. They're really designed for branding or content only websites. So if you are generating sales or leads on your site start with pages and events first. Let's look at each of these goal types in some more detail now. The page based goals or destination goals are where you're trying to get people to a particular conversion page on your website. Each page based goal allows for up to 20 funnel steps. This means you can define all the steps we expect people to travel through before converting. Hopefully your conversion funnel isn't 20 steps because that would be way too complicated and we probably wouldn't be seeing many conversions at the end. But Google Analytics does allow for that flexibility. So these types of goals are really ideal for forms, signups or any stepped process occurring on our website. I just want to emphasize when it comes to e-commerce we typically don't want to use goals we want to use the e-commerce tracking code instead. Next up we have event based goals. Events need to be tracked first as we've mentioned so you'll need to make sure that event tracking is configured before you begin configuring the actual goal inside Google Analytics. Just want to highlight there are no funnel steps for event based goals so they're not really suited to stepped processes but that being said they're perfect for tracking downloads, clicks on links or buttons, interactions or any single step actions occurring on your site. Then we have engagement based goals. These are based on either time or viewing a series of pages. I really want to highlight here that they will inflate your overall conversion numbers. Let me jump into this and explain it a little bit further. Imagine you have a certain number of people completing a form so you set up a page based goal for that particular form. Now you can imagine if we're comparing people filling out that form to the number of people who are say spending over two minutes on our website there's going to be a huge difference between those figures. So setting up an engagement goal along with a page based goal will inflate our overall conversion numbers when you jump into Google Analytics. So potentially you're going to see thousands of conversions but only a small portion of them were people actually completing the form. That being said engagement based goals are still useful. For example websites that don't have any page or event based goal options. Now that we've created a plan for setting up our goals and we understand the different types of goals it's time to configure them inside Google Analytics. Let's have a look at how we set up the most common type of goal a page based or destination goal inside Google Analytics. Here's what we'll need. So first off we'll need to identify the steps we want people to actually travel through on our website. I really encourage you to actually step through the pages on your website and list down the URLs. These will form our funnel steps when we configure our goal. We'll also need to make sure that the thank you page or confirmation page isn't shared between multiple actions so make sure it's unique. 
and then it's time to configure the goal. So let's now jump into Google Analytics and go through the steps. After heading into Google Analytics, you will need edit level permission in order to configure goals. So under the view section, I'm going to click on goals. And I can see here I don't have any goals configured yet, so I'm going to click on add new goal. From here I can name my goal. I can also choose the slot ID. This is really cosmetic. There's different sets of goals inside the Google Analytics report. So there's four sets of five goals each. This is basically a cosmetic grouping. You'll find it when you head into the standard reports inside Google Analytics. So if you're just getting started, just go with the default. That's perfectly fine. And then you can see the different types of goals you configure inside Google Analytics. So I'm going to focus on the most common one today, which is destination. But you can see you also have the option of setting up our duration, pages or screens per session and events, as well as smart goals if you are linked to Google AdWords. So today I'm going to click on destination for a page based goal and I'm going to click on continue. Now I need to set the final conversion page for my particular action. So in this particular case I'm going to enter in the URL I found after completing the action on my site. You also have the option of selecting how this is going to match. So let's quickly head out of here and I'll explain the different match types. The first option is equals to. This option matches pages exactly. For example, if we have forward slash thank you, it's just going to match that particular page. It's not going to match pages where there's additional details at the end or the start of the URL. It's going to match exactly. Then we have begins with. This will match your URLs with or without different parameters. So forward slash thank you will match thank you contact ID equals one and forward slash thank you status equals true. So it's broader in the way that it's matching URLs. Then there is regular expression. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's more advanced, but it gives you the flexibility to match URLs in different ways. In this example, we've created an OR statement. So we can see we have opening bracket news pipe, which is the OR statement, contact close bracket. So in this particular instance, it will match ID equals news or ID equals contact, but it won't match ID equals promo because that's not contained in the regular expression we've created. Now let's jump back into Google Analytics. Now that we're back, I can assign the dollar value. So in this particular case for my lead, I'm going to go with a symbolic value because I'm not 100% sure yet of how this is going to work. So I'm going to go with a $100 symbolic value. And then I can also select the funnel steps. These are the steps leading to that conversion page. So try and keep it simple. You don't need every page on your website listed here, just the key pages required to view before hitting that conversion page. So I'm just going to put in the form in this particular case. So you can see here you can add in additional steps if you choose. I'm going to remove them because I just have super simple. It's a form on a page that leads to the thank you page. And I also encourage you to leave required step as no or off. Um, this is because it only impacts one of the older reports inside Google Analytics. So you really shouldn't need that. You also have the option to verify the goal to quickly check based on seven days of historical data to see if the goal is working. In this particular case, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to click on save. And now I can see my new goal has been configured inside Google Analytics. So that's how you can track conversions using Google Analytics. Tell me how you're using goals. Let me know and leave your tips in the comments below. If you thought this video was helpful, then please subscribe, share it with your friends and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this.